Okay, so I got a new pistol. It's a 1911. It's actually the first 1911 that I ever owned, and really the first pistol that I got when I got out, the Remington R1 full size. And I'm going to go ahead and have my assistant give you a, a little uh, a close up on the pistol. So with this pistol, you can see that traditional 1911, it's got the white dot sights. Uh, they're actually pretty big. I haven't seen a 1911 that has uh, this traditional white dot uh, sight with uh, big white dots. Of course, it's got the uh, shorter uh, uh, grip safety and then has wood grips, has a short trigger, and also the safety on this side is pretty short it's pretty rough at first out of the box other than that everything's pretty uh pretty standard you've got the world war ii style you know cuts in here for easier trigger reach instead of the nice uh <clears throat> well not really nice but the uh, sharp corners right here in front of the trigger and then of course this is flat this is basically the favorite setup that a lot of people like but the hammer of course has just has horizontal serration so it's pretty traditional uh, uh, in some aspects and then kind of modified in the other. So up here you're going to notice that it's a, a lowered and flared ejection port. So it's not as high as the old school 1911s, but it still works pretty well. So anyways, the magazines are seven round magazines in this one. I'm not really a fan of that. I think that you should get eight round magazines. I'm going to have to upgrade to like Wilson Combat or Chip McCormick magazines. But this is really nostalgic for me uh, considering that I cut my teeth on all my firearms training on the 1911. Learned how to get fast and reloads everything that uh, I was learning recoil control. It started with this pistol right here and I never had a malfunction. Never had a part actually break on me. And... The thing was just amazing after uh, over 10,000 rounds. So, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on 1911s now that I have my baby with me. So, uh, there's going to be a lot uh, to talk about. So, anyways, all I have left of 45 is Spear Gold dot 230 grain. So, uh, until I load up some 45, I'm going to be shooting this uh, duty ammo through it. And, uh, it should be a pretty good way to break it in and yes it does need a break in it was basically just painted slightly filed and then uh, uh, it was basically just thrown together so it has a black oxide paint pretty rough uh, I took the thing completely apart and then I went ahead and uh, gave it a little bit of lubrication breakthrough uh, battleborn stuff and uh, then I just wiped it down so it's got like a dry film. My plan is actually to use the uh, Battleborn grease, uh, the breakthrough grease on this. When, you know, I get done with this, it's going to be about 300 rounds. But anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing loaded up and then we'll get on the range. Okay, so out on the range, got this loaded up. Uh, only got two magazines, can't really run through it like I would like, but... Uh, Anyways, got my two steel targets up, got fresh black paint on them, at least, you know, for the most part. It's running on the uh, one on the left, but this is from Targets USA. And uh, pretty good targets, like that I can just run them on T-Post since they're pretty much permanent here. So, anyways, alright, let's see how it does. And, first malfunction, so... Basically a failure to feed. I did lube up these magazines. So, okay, just racking it. So I think the springs are going to need to break in and kind of loosen up a little bit. They seem to not really, well, maybe they uh, don't really have the tension that they need. But, you know, we'll give it some time and really run it. So, there we go. Another one. It's like three rounds in, having an issue. Okay, so I never really had any issues with uh, my other 1911, but you know, it's not to be, uh, it, it's kind of to be expected that when you have something that's really roughly manufactured and stuff, and it's not necessarily lubricated uh, as they would typically want. 
uh, you can have some issues. But again, I don't recommend the Remington magazines. I don't like them, but uh, it didn't really have anything to do with function. It's just seven rounds, really. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up some more ammo and get some footage of how it shoots. One of the things I like about the 1911, I'm pretty happy about it, is I'm going to be starting out, uh, well, more or less continuing my discussion on barrier movement and kind of an introduction. Whenever you're not using the 1911, uh, you're, you're putting it on safe because this trigger, pretty sensitive, no reason not to have it on safe. So basically, you go out. And as soon as you come back within the barrier, when your finger comes off the trigger, there's no reason not to have your finger underneath it and pushing up and holding it there. Now, if you're anticipating using it, resting your finger on top of the safety, and even when you're firing, just resting it there and pushing down helps with keeping tension on it, helps you keep your grip on it. So... going over top behind cover because uh, typically you don't want to offer your head as much as uh, you can prevent it so. so that's basically working around the barriers uh, it's not too difficult uh, you just got to get them in get used to the manual of arms this thing's still uh, breaking in a bit. We're going to rough out the edges by firing it. I don't have a problem with breaking periods. I consider it to be more of an amnesty period where you just have fun shooting the gun until a certain point. Kind of wear all the parts in, get them nice and smooth. If you didn't need a break-in period on a lot of guns, then they would already have the wear of a thousand rounds. There's, I mean, finishes do create wear as well. So, uh, anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy this, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, thanks a lot for watching the Remington 1911R1 overview.